Jambo jambo E jambo watoto wa Afrika This is the Ali Africa show and on this episode we profile Shitemi Hamadi Shitemi is the managing editor at the Kenya Monitor He writes on issues of African governance, economics, and development. He is engaged in storytelling Africa's struggle with peace and conflict. It all started as a matter of or issue of curiosity, you know. Uh, when I was young, I used to like news. And so that gave me a good picture of, of, of what is going on. And then in 2002, in December, when uh, the NAC government was elected, in a very euphoric elections, uh, maybe the bug also got me then. I think I saw the way there was a lot of uh, unity in uh, ensuring that the then regime is, is sent home. And I felt uh, this is something I should, uh, I should also be part of. He resolutely believes in the role of the media in keeping the public informed to promote good governance and better decision making. From there, I, I decided that uh, I have to be an active citizen. I have to, when I go to school, I did uh, international relations and, and I was very active a lot on, 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 on issues of world affairs. I also took part in uh, Kenya Model United Nations, uh, which really gave me a lot of practical knowledge about uh, about how the world 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 uh, dynamics work. Shitemi asserts that the solution to Africa's challenges is not to agonize but to organize. I look for a time when Kenyans will think uh, of the actions uh, and especially what they say. There's a lot of uh, vile negative ethnicity that uh, is around society. Um, and I just hope there is one day where people will decide that they'll think first what they say, um, whether they'll act contra uh, uh, adversely or act contrary to what they're saying. It won't matter much. I mean, when you think of going to a ballot box, it's a secret ballot. I, won't, I, don't, I don't know how you voted. But if we can just think what we say, whether it's in social media, whether it's in our interpersonal relationship with people, I think that, that for me will be a very a good day. Hello and welcome to the show. This is Eyelid Africa, where we raise the levels of leadership dialogues. With me today is Shitemi Hamadi, the, monitoring, the Kenya Monitor Managing Director and a practicing freelance journalist in governance, economics and development in the region and in Kenya. Welcome, Hamadi. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, appreciate it. You're welcome. Now, everyone is talking about the African world. What does it mean to you? I think the African promise um, means to me the ability of the Africans to tell their own narrative. The African promise, as has been argued, is largely hinged on the natural resources that are on the continent and how there is a wave of increased good governance in how these natural resources are impacting positively on development. You look at countries like Equatorial Guinea, which is today a middle income economy, which wasn't uh, 10 years ago. Uh, while they still had the oil, they have found a way of ensuring that the oil which they have is being better governed uh, by them to create wealth and uplift the standards. So it's about the narrative which we say as Africans, uh, first by Africans and also as seen by others as to how we are telling the story about uh, the continent. Yes. Okay, impressive. Now, you're often outspoken and bold on issues, politics and governance, in an environment impressive of self-expression. 
and freedom of speech. Do you think free speech harms or builds a nation? I think free speech only builds a nation. It cannot harm a nation. When, when, when you read that our constitution, for instance, uh, Article 33, one on freedom of expression, it only includes four limitations on freedom of expression. Uh, advocacy to hatred, hate speech, incitement to violence, and uh, propaganda to war. To the extent that anyone uh, positively uses their freedom of expression to create knowledge, to challenge authority, to call for better governance, to call for leaders to account, there can't be a way in which uh, you endanger yourself or you endanger society. In any case, it is only when you shine light upon that which is not right that even those that are in power can actually know that uh, there are decisions both of commission and commission. Remember when you're, when you're in office, you have the authority to keep silent and to do something. When you keep silent, that's a decision of omission, which has its ramification as well. And uh, anyone who brings these issues to light is only in any way uh, improving their ability to actually make better decisions when they do, and not the reverse. Impressive. And how is open discussion on our challenges as a, as a people important to us? There are interesting stories uh, if, if you look at uh, this country, for instance. Um, I was in, in Kitui the other day, and um, they're talking about coal. Okay? And the residents have been informed that the coal, which will be mined soon by the Chinese, will transform their lives. But they do not know who owns the oil. Uh, they are told that there are local shareholders. They do not know who are the local shareholders. There was a trip that uh, some of the residents were taken to China to know where this, the, the owners are. But while they stayed there for one week, there was nothing. They didn't even see a building or an office that uh, Feng Si, the company which was given the license to extract coal, uh, is. So what does that tell you? There is a lot that is happening that we are not being told. Now, there is, a, there is a conscious decision to do that because any informed society, any inform, better informed society will raise eyebrows. A, a, a very simple example is th there is quite a lot of talk about corruption today, how it's endemic everywhere. In fact, the other day they were talking about Utali College, right? Or been uh, many other things, especially the Golden Bug. Even dating back to the Kenyatta, Kenyatta regime, you know? There used to be the, the Fataleza scandal, which uh, the then finance minister, the former president, was, was involved. The difference is simple. Today, there is quite a lot of liberalization of, of, of information. People in governments are speaking up. Uh, politicians and executives who are also in this, holding these public offices are seeing things which are not right, and they are bringing them to light. It may, to some extent, mean that today there is more corruption. But the other angle to look at it is that there's more openness, even from those who are in the system and they see harm being done. Okay? Now, that is a good thing. So, to the extent that we can tell some of these stories to ourselves, I always think that the best way you can ever do anything is to just feed people with information. That's it. Nothing more. What did they decide to do with it? It's upon them. Okay. What do you think is the potential of Twitter activism to promote change among the people? And there is, there is a lot. There is a lot of, a lot of potential of, of, of using Twitter. And, and, and Twitter is much better than Facebook. Uh, largely because you can have an interaction with Twitter with anyone. Remember, when you have an online platform like Twitter, uh, regardless of whether you have one million followers or you are none, you are all the same. So long as you know how to effectively communicate, you can raise your issue to anyone and the world will know about it. Now, what Twitter provides is twofold. One is your ability to mobilize people who are like-minded and people who, for instance, you could call them activists, uh, to be aware of what is going on, both good and bad. But the other thing is that uh, also Twitter do is to mobilize. You mobilize those who can come to you to, 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 to support you or to support the call or the cause which you are doing. 
I would give you a good example. Uh, last year when children were gassed at Langata Primary School, that information, while it was, um, had been printed in, in the mainstream media, the conversation started on Twitter. People picked up that story. They started digging the owners of the hotel. They started rallying about what they should do about it and even convening meetings. All that was happening on Twitter. And that can tell you the power that Twitter has in mobilizing. It may not mean that it is the, uh, the solution, but it provides the avenue upon which you can make now the action. Remember, even if I were to use that example, while there's mobilization and creating information was on Twitter, actions were offline. Okay? So it is not the solution, but it is one way of creating information as to what could be the solution. Okay, she tell me, hold it right there. Fire burning, it tell them the truth, there's nothing to lose, no, it keep the fire burning. Keep the fire burning, it tell them the truth, there's nothing to lose, no, it keep the fire burning. Welcome back to the show. This is I Lead Africa and with me is Hamadi Shitemi Hamadi, the Kenya Monitor Managing Editor. Welcome back. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. Hmm. Now to my sixth question. What do you think is the most important task for a citizen? The most important task for a citizen? You know, Article 3 of the Constitution says that every citizen has a duty to defend the constitution. So that is our first duty for every citizen. Uh, and by defending the constitution is ensuring that the values, the principles uh, that are espoused in the document, because it is the living document, come to light at all times. When you, for instance, look at uh, Article 10 of our constitution, which talks about national values, some of our national values are things like uh, integrity, mm -hmm. accountability, transparency. Mm -hmm. Now, every citizen has a responsibility to ensure that in where they live, where they work, all that they see is being done lives up to the expectations of the constitution. Now, this includes both what is uh, in the private sector and in the public sector. Remember, all of us consume goods. So, which means that even deeds that are happening in the private sector or the existence of the private se sector, it also hinges on consumption of their services and goods by the public. Um, now that's that's the, the first and the primary role of, of, of every citizen. The second role of every citizen is that uh, they should be aware. Remember uh, that uh, ignorance of the law is no defense. If you commit a crime today, you cannot go to a high court or to any uh, court and say that you didn't know about the existence of that law or you're making a mistake. So the second responsibility of every citizen is to be aware. And we need to use all our means to be aware. And, and, and media is one platform which uh, we need to use to, to be aware. And, and in Kenya, luckily, radio is over 80%, and which, naturally, uh, we should be aware of, of some of the things that come up. And thirdly, the other responsibility now is to bring out what is our dream. What do we want to see is in, 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 in our country? What do you want to see in your world rep representative who is your immediate uh, elected leader? Do you want to see that the road which your mother uses to carry the tomatoes from the farm to the market so that once she sells them, you have breakfast, you have your fees? As anyone who uh, is of right mind, I think that it is your responsibility to air out your dream life, your dream service delivery. Uh, from the providers or from both the public and private sector so that your own life mm -hmm. 
can be better. I always, I always look at um, at life that in whatsoever much you look at it as as a selfish gain. I mean, like that example I just given. If you look at at that road which you use, or that road which your mother uses to get the tomatoes from the farm to the market, as benefiting you, then you also see the bigger picture. It will benefit other people. There's a ripple effect when we look at things from from that prism. Moving forward, what do you think should be done for Africa to have abundant opportunities for all people? Well, I, I don't think that there, there is a lack of abundance. Mm -hmm. there, is, there, there is abundance. What, what needs to be done is equity. Mm -hmm. uh, equity in that uh, the provision of these goods and services needs to be in a manner that ensures there is fairness mm -hmm. in how every other individual uh, receives them or, or uh, uses them. Mm -hmm. When you look at uh, construction of hospitals, which is a very uh, core good for, for any living human being, mm -hmm. fairness will demand that if Kisumu County has 85% of malaria pre uh, prevalence, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. and Nakuru County has 40% of malaria prevalence. Mm -hmm. You should not take malaria drugs of the same quantity to both hospitals, right? Yeah. You need to consider that dynamic, that Kisumu County has more, therefore take there more drugs, malaria drugs. But you should also need to also know that what is it that Nakuru has high prevalence of? It could be a different, it could be TB. And, and so what do you do about that and, and which uh, Uwasengishi County wouldn't? Mm -hmm. So fair, fairness uh, is, is one core thing which uh, needs to happen on this continent for, for it to, to move forward. The other thing is just basic good governance. Mm -hmm. And by good governance is appreciating that um, there isn't uh, a limitless opportunities for all of us. And there isn't even a limitless opportunity for, for those in power. They need to appreciate that when they embezzle, when they misappropriate funds, and also when they misgovern. Remember, even mis you misgovern by doing simple things like um, not giving uh, people opportunities to serve uh, meritoriously. If you qualify and uh, you apply for an interview, you should be given that job or denied that job on the basis that you merit. With the exception on when you need to improve the general life standards or to abide by certain principles or provisions. Uh, um, um, I have in mind uh, the marginalized, uh, they could be young people, they could be women, um, who need a pedestal because Africa is a largely patriarchal society. Uh, and good governance appreciates that is positive discrimination. Yeah. From your workplace here at Power, what is the what is the importance? What, what is the importance of driving, bringing people together to change? Well, the one, the beauty of, of, of uh, this ecosystem is the diversity uh, that it has. So here you have poets, you have filmmakers, uh, you have journalists, you have uh, photographers, uh, you have developers, you have activists. Now, what that gives you is a breadth of an imaginable creativity that uh, once you harness it, uh, you are able to realize or reach a greater uh, number of, of, of Kenyans. I say this because look at um, the representativeness of, of, of some of these uh, creatives you have. Uh, a lot of them are about uh, visual art. Now, uh, the power of visual art is that it creates or uh, sustains the image of what you see uh, for a very long time. And you'll be reminded by the actions which you saw. Uh, some which may be good, some which uh, may, be, may, may be bad. Um, now here, all this, the fusion of all these creatives uh, coming together is that um, there's a lot of beauty in, in what they, they conceive. Um, one is that uh, there's a lot of uh, collective unity. Uh, in and a common purpose in what they want. Uh, they could decide that uh, there's been a lot of rampant corruption 
now we need to do a song mm -hmm. that highlights uh, this corruption in the country. Now, the designer will um, will, uh, will will have a role. Um, a developer will have a role. Uh, the musicians will have a role. There'll be a producer somewhere. Now, all these are, are expertise which are within the space. Uh, secondly, is that um, some of these creatives who are here have, you could say, are rookies, are learning. Uh, now, because they're learning, they get to know from the best as to how not to do things and how to do things. Uh, what that breeds is our, uh, what someone could call institutional capacity or institutional strengthening, which is very crucial uh, for the long-term sustainability of some of this uh, cultural change that uh, we recommend. Remember, because of the, the niche that uh, the space is, uh, it's all about the culture. The thinking is that when you can influence people's culture, you can influence their behavior and you can influence their, 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 their decisions. Uh, the reality is that uh, this will not happen in one day. Uh, but over time, people will always remember uh, what they had, what they saw, and that will have uh, an impact in, in, in how they think of, of our country from whatever paradigm, whether it's uh, at the ballot, whether it's uh, how they do their work in, in wherever they are, they'll always be remembering that uh, I saw something interesting. I saw a graffiti which showed a warthog that was eating a small child. And what does that tell you about humanity? Have we become that gross? Have we become that uncaring? Now what will you do once you see that? That becomes your, your decision. Yeah. Thank you so much for your budget. It's part of the Sadly, we have come to the end of the show. Our guest today was Shitemi Hamadi, and I have been your host, Sarah Yunus. Until next time. Jambo, jambo